Para uwi natin ngayon at karangalan ko pong ipakilala sa inyo ang dating prior provincial ng uh, Philippine province, Dominican province of uh, the Philippines, dating provincial namin at uh, ngayon po ay nahalal na 87th, if I'm not mistaken, uh, successor of St. Uh, Dominic. Kung si Pope Francis ay successor of St. Peter, si St. Dominic, ang successor po ngayon ay isang Pilipino. Of course, we address him as the Master General of the Order, but I would rather address him as just Father Gerard as I used to address him. Panauhin natin Reverend Father Gerard Francisco Parco Timoner III, OP. Magandang magandang hapon po, Father Gerard. Magandang hapon, Brother June, at magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Alam ko, bagong gising ka. Umaga-umaga dyan, nag-albasal ka na ba? <laughs> I am so glad and uh, very, very honored at nakasama ka namin dito sa ating programa. Father Gerard, uh, unang katanungan lang siguro, uh, how does it feel to be the first Filipino to become the Master General and Successor of St. Dominic? Uh, first, we have to understand that, well, the order is universal. An order po ay universal. We are present in so many countries. And if the order is universal, then brothers who are called to be in leadership can come from any part of the world. But it's true, historically speaking, it's the first time that there is a Filipino, but it's not the first time that somebody came from Asia because there was already a master of the order who came from Asia. He, he was Spaniard. Siya po ay si Blessed Buenaventura Garcia Paredes who taught at the University of Santo Tomas. And in fact, he is one of the brothers who was instrumental in the transfer of the university from Intramuros to Sampalo. Mm. So Benaventura Garcia Paredes, he became master of the order, and then he was martyred in Spain. Now he is blessed. He was beatified by Pope Benedict. Uh, Pope Benedict XVI. Father, your term is nine years, di ba? Uh, so, as we speak, ilan na po ang mission ng uh, territories ng uh, order of preachers all over the world? Uh, okay. Uh, the order of preachers is present in 98 countries uh -huh. wow. where 41 of the brothers are bishops. Some are retired. There are 4,800 priests. 136 deacons, uh, 752 student brothers, or ito po yung tinatawag nating seminarista, but they are not seminarians because we are student brothers. And happily, salamat sa Dios, meron po kaming 165 novices. So yeah. these are just the friars. But the nuns, the contemplative nuns, are also part of the order. And there are 194 monasteries. I just came from Nigeria for the establishment of a new monastery uh, where 11 uh, sisters made solemn profession. So there are 194 monasteries all over the world with 2,512 novices. At alam, at, and as you know, Brother June, you are a member of the priest of the lay fraternities of St. Dominic. Uh, the lay fraternities are present in 75 countries Whoa. with 2,100 plus fraternities. Mm -hmm. And of course, alam po ninyo kung ilan ang members nito, 127,500 plus members. Mm -hmm. But we also have priestly fraternities. Uh, these are diocesan priests who are members of the family who share in the charism and spirituality of the order, just like the lay fraternities are doing according to their state of life. And there are 421 members. Uh, some of these bishops are well known in the Philippines, like our very own brother, uh, Socrates Villegas. Villegas, yes. Yes. Yeah. And, Father. Yeah. Yes, uh, Father, this early, um, Masyadong napakarami mo ng activities. What are the major challenges that you have encountered so far as a, a Master General of the Order? Uh, ngayon, uh, ito na ang position mo. 
anong mga challenges ang una mong na-encounter? The challenge to the order is the same. <laughs> uh, throughout the years, nagbabago lang po yung context and circumstances. And what is that challenge? The renewal and revitalization of preaching in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, the charism of preaching that was entrusted to Dominic is a gift, a charism. A charism is a gift, but it is a gift that is not for us. It is a gift that is for the building up of the church, the body of Christ. So mm -hmm. that is the main challenge. And how do we do preaching in our own time? in what we call as the digital continent. And what we're yes. doing right now is part of the digital continent. Siguro po, 500 years ago, the challenge was how to get to uh, the places where the gospel was not yet proclaimed. And uh -huh. nagdiriwang po natin ito ngayon sa Pilipinas, iba? 500 years of the first mm. baptism, yes. the first Eucharist. And the missionaries before, they crossed the Atlantic from Spain, Brunian, cross the Atlantic, walang aeroplano, mm -hmm. <laughs> by boat, some of them died crossing the Atlantic. And when they reached Mexico, the Americas, they crossed by land. Uh -huh. Walang train, walang aeroplano, they crossed by land. May mga namatay na rin tong missionary crossing the land. <laughs> and then when they reached the vast Pacific Ocean, imagine, just look at that, no? They crossed also uh, by, by, by boat, by ship, mm -hmm. until they reached the Philippines. So that was a very big challenge, but it's about how to preach. Now, our challenge is not so much about traveling because that is easily done. In our own time, it's about the difficulty of traveling, even if yes. things are possible because of COVID. Uh -huh. po, hindi lang, you don't just don't pass through x-ray machines. You also must show proof that you have been vaccinated <laughs> and, and all of these things. Uh -huh. But that one is really something that is easily surmountable. Mm -hmm. The main difficulty is how to reach the hearts of people, how to reach uh -huh. the minds of people. Mm -hmm. And that is more difficult than crossing the Pacific. Yes, it's yes. more difficult than crossing the Atlantic. <clears throat> because our world is a world that is skeptical. Uh, it is a world that is uh, secularized. It is a world that is filled with all the challenges that we are facing mm -hmm. uh, right now. People do not see a need for God. There is no horizon of the etern of the eternal. Yung sinasabi yeah. po ninyo kanina, pinag-uusapan nyo kanina ni Fatima, which is a very beautiful image of uh, the mystery of the Assumption and the communion of saints. Yes. That once we get to a very beautiful place, the first thing that comes to our mind is to bring people we care about, people we love. Uh -huh. And that is the communion of saints. That uh -huh. is the intercession of the Blessed Mother. So people have lost that kind of horizon. But at the same time, there are people who are sincerely looking for meaning in their lives mm -hmm. that is why it, it will it might come as a surprise there are also many converts right now young people who are converting to the faith you know why because their mm -hmm. parents did not bring them to the church they were not baptized right. in the church uh -huh. so on their own they're finding their way uh, uh -huh. to the church uh Ang, ang uh, sitwasyon natin ngayon, Father, uh, we are using the social media, as we speak, uh, to evangelize, but uh, still in the country, uh, base sa mga kwento ng mga kaibigan ko, like Father Joe Marcibo, who was assigned to the Bab Babuyanes Island uh, for several years, like kwento nila na, you know, for them to celebrate Mass, sometimes they have to, they have to walk for several hours para makarating to the mga community. And these are people who are willing to accept the Lord, pero yung kahirapan ng komunikasyon, kahirapan ng transportasyon, you, we can see the the uh, sufferings also of the preachers, the uh, the uh, the friars para magampanan yung tungkulin nila. Uh, 
Well, now that we are celebrating the 800th year of the death anniversary of St. Dominic, ano po, uh, Father, ang mga uh, programa natin uh, para mabigyan diin itong celebration natin, itong 800th year na ito? Yeah, we are, as you said, we are, you are part of the family, no? And we are celebrating the 800 years, and we call that the, the Dies Natalis, the birth of Dominic into eternal life. So we're not really calling it the death, but the birth the into death. eternal life to highlight uh, what awaits us, that hope that awaits us, that mm. ultimately we will, born, we will be born into eternal life. Uh, <clears throat> the central image uh, that the order chose was the Mascarella table. Ito po yung painting after Dominic was uh, canonized. Mm -hmm. It is painted on a table, which serve also as a table. <laughs> and Dominic is depicted as on the table with his brothers. Uh -huh. So we are celebrating Dominic not as a saint alone on a pedestal up there, but we are celebrating Dominic as a saint who is enjoying table fellowship with his brothers. Of course, there is an allusion to the Eucharist, where the uh -huh. Lord Jesus was also sharing that table before he died <clears throat> uh -huh. uh, with, with, the, with the twelve. <clears throat> uh -huh. And of course, uh, it also alludes to the miracle when Dominic had, and the friars, they had no food. Uh, they prayed, and according to the story, an angel brought them bread. Great. So yes. that is also an allusion to that. <clears throat> but it also tells us about the many other tables. Uh, it was, as you recall, there is this table that Dominic shared with an innkeeper who was a heretic. Mm -hmm. And they spent the entire night in dialogue, in discussion. So this is the table that we must sit, that, that we should prepare to, to welcome people who do not share our belief. A table that we share with them. And it is a table of dialogue. Kasi po mm -hmm. kung ginawa lang ni Dominic, eh, tulig sa inyo yung, uh, yung paniniwala ng heretic, yung innkeeper, I don't think that, the, that they will spend the entire night after a few yeah. minutes and na yun. Ayaw na nilang mag-usap, di ba? So, they were able to spend the entire night in dialogue precisely because Dominic also listened mm -hmm. to the innkeeper. He was not just telling him he's wrong. So that's the table that we share with those who are whose whose beliefs are other than ours. But this is also uh, the table of fraternity, the table mm -hmm. of brotherhood. And Pope Francis highlighted that with Fratelli Tutti, brothers all. And I think that is really uh, the one of the main challenges, not just in the church, but in our world today. But it's not just brotherhood, but it's also about charity. It's about mercy. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Because we share this table also with those who are hungry, with those who have nothing. Brotherhood is not enough to solve the world's problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because as we know, there are so many uh, bad things, even crimes committed by brothers against brothers. Just look yes. at the Bible. The first crime was committed by a brother against a brother, Cain, mm -hmm. murdering his brother. It was not murder, it was not homicide, it was fratricide. Oh. So the, the, the first recorded identity theft is in the Bible also, when Jacob stole the identity of his brother Esau. Mm -hmm. The first human trafficking recorded, no? the brothers of Joseph who sold him <laughs> to these right, right. traders in, in Egypt. So these are this is human trafficking <laughs> committed by brothers against brothers. So aside from brotherhood, there must be fraternal or sisterly a charity to one another mm -hmm. and mercy. So that, that table is a sign of that because Dominic, when he was a student in Palencia, when there was a famine, he sold his books Yes. And he did not just sell the books and gave the money to the poor. He used the money to establish a center for almsgiving. Mm -hmm. In other words, he organized something that will go on and continue. So it was not a one 
kind, it's not a one time thing that was done. He established, according to the Lebelu, in the history, po, uh, he established a center for arms giving. So it's a challenge for us. We, we just, and we are seeing this kind of table in the Philippines, no, yung community pantry. pantry. That yes. is really very inspiring. That is really very inspiring. What is happening? It's that table that we are talking about, the table of mercy, because mm -hmm. we find in our brothers and sisters the face of Jesus, who is the face of the Father's mercy. Again, I would like to connect that, if you remember, the year of mercy when Pope Francis visited the Philippines. Yes. Uh, the, the letter was Misericordia Vultus. The face of the Father's mercy is Jesus. And we find that with our brothers and sisters whom we invite to this table. And probably, and finally, there might be other things, but finally, I would like to call to remind ourselves di ba brother Jun siguro napapansin niyo kapag tayo nagdarasal after meals or before meals we pray for the souls of the departed no right right di ba right. pagkatapos ng grace after meals may the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest and peace rest and it's peace part of our tradition uh, nung una nga, sabi ko, ba't kaya namin dinarasal yung tungkol sa patay pagkakain? Baka kaya may lason yung aming pagkain, kaya nag-isang <laughs> Well, isa, It also isa shows sa... our communion with the brothers and sisters who died. Yes. In yes. other words, the communion of the saints, yes. Hello, alam mo, Father, uh, one thing that really caught my attention doon sa table that you were mentioning, uh, it's not just a table of mercy, no? For Saint Dominic, it was a table for him to listen to people who do not have the same faith. No, I think that listening is very important. Also, sa isang table ay nandoon at willing ka na makinig sa kanya para makuha mo yung whatever is in his mind, maunawaan mo siya. And I think that's part of being merciful. Yeah. Now, um, we do not have enough time anymore. Gusto ko sanang paabutin ng isang oras ang kwentuhan natin. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, itong panahon na ito, Father, just two more questions left. Itong panahon na ito na napag-usapan natin kanina na medyo mahirap ang kilos, limited ang movements natin. Even the churches in the Philippines, uh, majority in the national capital region are closed. So we lay people are dependent on the social media. Um, lay Dominican as I am, what would be your uh, message to us lay Dominicans uh, in the evangelization of the church? Um, when it comes to preaching and listening and uh, the charism of the Dominican uh, congregation, uh, uh, talking to lay Dominicans who are watching us right now, this will be a big challenge to us. Yeah. I would like to call to mind the letter of Pope Francis to the Order. Ang title po ay Predicator Grazie, Preacher of Grace. That is a very important letter because for the very first time, the Pope acknowledged all the branches of the Dominican family and named each of the branch, including the lay fraternities. And in that very same letter, the Holy Father acknowledged the different forms of preaching. So that he said, the writings of Catherine of Siena is a wonderful kind of preaching. So those of you in the social media, your writings, your postings are an important form of preaching. And then he said, the artworks of Beato Angelico, or Fra Angelico, mm -hmm. is also a work of preaching. For those of you who are in the arts, whatever kind of art, these are also forms of preaching. And then he said, the works of charity of Martin de Porres, Rosa de Lima, Juan Macias, are also important works of preaching. And then he said, the life witness, the life testimony of countless laity are important forms of preaching. And then, of course, he said in, an, in, in a very beautiful way, uh, 
Those whose voices were silenced by martyrdom also mm -hmm. eloquently preach the gospel. And martyrdom is witnessing. It's, it doesn't just mean dying, uh, but it's about living for the faith. So these are also forms of preaching. In other words, the Holy Father has enlarged. Talagang pinalawak po niya ang anong ang ibig sabihin ng preaching. And then he connects that with his favorite theme. We have to become missionary disciples. And he said, Dominic, Saint Dominic is a very important saint of what it is to be a missionary disciple. Because Dominic, uh, he either spoke with God or mm -hmm. spoke about God. First, listening. You speak with God through prayer by listening. And that's the problem of our time. Yes. So many people do not speak with God and yet they claim to be speaking about God, to be preaching. Uh -huh. yes. So many people do not listen to the teachings of the church and then they criticize the church. Uh -huh. That is sad. That is sad. So missionary disciple, a disciple is a student, literally. Discipulus means discipline of science, mathematics, discipline of this or that. So a disciple is a learner, a student, one who listens to the teacher who is Jesus. So first, we are disciples. Then we become missionaries. That is Dominic. Uh, contemplation, action. Speaking with God, speaking about God. So synthesis of, uh, of life and mission or apostolate, the synergy uh, between life and mission. So I think uh, that is very important, not just for the Dominican lady, but for all of us, for yes. all of us Christians. Uh, Father, I wish I could have more time to speak yes. with you, but uh, in closing, do you have um, a special message to the uh, members of the uh, Dominican uh, congregation in the Philippine province as a whole? Since most of the nuns are watching us right now, the active sisters are watching us right now, the Dominican province are watching us right now on uh, television. Uh, in addition to what I have already shared, and you were mentioning this in your dialogue with Fatima, it's about hope. And that is our hymn to Dominic, O wonderful hope, Ospen Minam. O wonderful hope that he gave us at the hour of his death. That seems to be a contradiction. How can death be a sign of hope? And then giving, the, uh, giving hope to the brothers who are crying. Uh, and then we realize that at that moment, we see hope. Because Dominic gave hope to the brothers with a promise, I will be more useful to you when I am there than I am with you right now. But that's one side. The other side is to die is a lonely act because we die alone. But Dominic was not really alone because he was surrounded by his brothers. His brothers. Uh -huh. That is the challenge for us in these times of pandemic. How can we be with people who are dying? How can we accompany them so that they do not make this transition alone? Because hope is not about the promise of a better future. Hope is the presence of Christ in us. That is in the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. So hope is that God will never abandon us whether we die or we live. God is with us. That is hope. Well, maraming maraming salamat, uh, Father Gerard. Do you have uh, a future schedule of visiting the Philippines? <laughs> <laughs> we we'll miss very, you here. Eh, napakahirap po kasing bumiyahe. Like I was in Nigeria, I had to spend 10 days in isolation before Quarantine. coming to uh -huh. Italy and upon arrival here 10 days, so 20 days. Yes, you know, in yes. isolation. The same is uh -huh. true in the Philippines. No, And I heard you cannot go directly to Manila. No. You have to do quarantine uh -huh. outside, etc. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we'll see. Thank... Hopefully December. The, oh, the 50th well, anniversary of the Dominican province of the Philippines. Hopefully. Oh, uh, we will pray for that. Maraming maraming salamat. Maraming salamat uh, po. All George. the best in your preaching, Brother June.
Thank you very much and God bless you in your ministry too. Thank you. Atin po nakasama mga kaibigan ang uh, Master General of the Order of Preachers, uh, unang-unang Pilipinong Master General of the Order of Preachers, Reverend Father Gerard Francisco Parco Tibonar III, OP, buhat po sa Convent of Santa Sabina, dyan po sa Rome, Italy. Magbabalik ang palatuntunang Dr. Love Radio Show at ang inyong mga liham kasaysayan na ipinadala sa ating palatuntunan sa pagbabalik ng programa ito. Music